Welcome back to the Gift of Podcast. Outside linebacker rankings are up next. And at number one, I have Azizo Jalari from Georgia. I watched the Alabama game, and I really like what I saw, especially because he was making plays against Alex Leatherwood, who's my number one tackle in this year's draft. The positives are he's versatile. He's effective at both the defensive end position and outside linebacker position. And I think that's important to a coach. He doesn't have to change personnel up as much, and he can disguise coverages. He also has a good speed rush, and that really popped off screen to me. His break off the line of scrimmage, how quickly he was able to get to the quarterback, it was very noticeable. He has good hand technique, and he's also decent in zone coverage. Pretty much everything you'd want from an outside linebacker, he has. The only negative thing I could find was that he's a little bit undersized. If he bulks up a little bit more, he's going to be the total package. At number two, I have Patrick Johnson from Tulane. I watched the SMU game, and some of what I saw popped off screen. The positives are he's got a good speed rush. He's good with his hand technique, good play recognition. He's decent against the run, and he's consistent for a full four quarters. I can't tell you how many prospects take plays off, aren't effective for stretches on end, not with this guy. The only negative things I could find was that he's a little bit undersized, and he also needs to get better in zone coverage. He wasn't terrible at it. He just needs to be coached up a little bit, and then he'll be good. At number three, I have Baron Browning from Ohio State. I watched the Clemson game, and I liked some of what I saw. The positives are he has a good speed rush with a good first step. He's decent in zone coverage, and he's also a solid tackler. The negatives are he doesn't have a bull rush. Also, if he's asked to blitz, he gets blocked way too easily. That's not a good thing. You want to see some push there. He needs to get better in run recognition especially against read option. And he also needs to work on his speed when dropping back into coverage, especially against ball carriers. For whatever reason, he has a hard time sealing the edge. And there were a few plays where, you know, it looked like he could make a play on the ball carrier and it looked like he had cement in his shoes. Uh, That to me is strength and weight room, things like that. He's got to get better with his speed. At number four, I have Zavin Collins from Tulsa. I watched the Cincinnati game and I didn't like what I saw. And I'm not sure why people have him as the number one outside linebacker. I can take a guess, uh, but he is definitely not close to being a total package at the position. The only positive that I could find is that he's good in zone coverage. So if the draft experts are ranking him based on that alone, okay, that makes sense. Uh, But for the other things, I didn't see much of. He's undersized, he gets blocked and pushed around way too easily. He's not good against the run, and I didn't see much in the pass rush department either. So I'll need some explanation as to why he's the number one overall at the position for some people, Um, but the only good thing I could find about him was his zone coverage. At number five, I have Joseph Asai from Texas. I watched the Iowa State game, and I didn't see a whole lot. The positives are he wasn't a liability against the run. He held his own. He held his blocker, but that was it. He's an average pass rusher. And he had decent strength at times, but nothing eye-popping. The negatives are he was very inconsistent. Long stretches of time went by without him having any impactful plays. He isn't versatile. I only saw him line up as a defensive end. And for a guy that you would expect to drop into coverage more, he didn't do a whole lot of that. I was a little bit disappointed with that, actually. And he doesn't have multiple pass rush moves. So that, to me, is a big project. To cap off the list, Grant Stewart from Houston I watched the BYU game, and he was very one-dimensional. So the positives were good movement and recognition and zone coverage. So if you're drafting him, I would say you're going to get him more for that. He's a sure tackler as well, so I did appreciate that against the run. The negatives are he doesn't have much of a pass rush, and he isn't overly physical at the line of scrimmage. So another project there. Um, And obviously, the outside linebacker position isn't very deep this year. I'm sure that there were some defensive ends that we talked about that could transition to both positions in that video, Uh, but straight up solid outside linebacker this year, not a whole lot more projects than sure things. So the next position that'll be coming will be inside linebacker. Make sure to hit the like button, share the videos and subscribe.